The Great Library of Alexandria was one of the largest and most significant libraries of the ancient world. Alexandria functioned as a major center of scholarship and was considered the capital of knowledge and learning. It is unknown how many books or scrolls, as these books were inscribed on a papyrus scroll, were at this library. But Demetrius, who convinced Ptolemy Soter to establish the library, envisioned a library that would house a copy of every book in the world. So let me tell you about the end. It's a story about the last scientist who worked at the Great Library of Alexandria, a mathematician, astronomer, physicist, and the head of the school of Neoplatonic of philosophy in Alexandria. That's an extraordinary range of accomplishments for any individual in any age. Her name was Hypatia. She was born in Alexandria in the year 370 AD, although there are other accounts of her being born in 350 AD, giving a 20-year gap of her actual age. Nevertheless, this was a time when women had essentially no options. They were considered property. By all accounts, she was said to be a great beauty, physically attractive. She likely had many suitors, but by all accounts, she never married and is believed to have led a celibate life. When asked why she was obsessed with mathematics and would not marry, she replied that she was wedded to the truth. The Alexandria of Hypatia's time, by then, under Roman rule, was a city in serious conflict. Slavery, the disease of the ancient world, had sapped classical civilization of its vitality. The growing Christian church was consolidating its power and attempting to eradicate pagan influence and culture. Hypatia stood at the focus, at the epicenter of mighty social forces. Cyril, the bishop of Alexandria, despised her, in part because of her close friendship with the Roman governor, but also because she symbolized, she was a symbol of learning and science, which were largely identified by the early church with paganism. In great personal danger, Hypatia continued to teach and to publish until in the year 415 AD, on her way to work, she was set upon by a fanatical mob of Cyril's followers. They dragged her from a chariot, tore off her clothes, flayed her flesh from her bones using nothing but seashells. Her remains were burned, her works obliterated, her name forgotten. Cyril was made a saint. The glory of the library is nothing but a memory, it does not exist. The last remains of the library were destroyed within a year of Hypatia's death. And what was to follow was a thousand years of darkness in Europe, until the likes of Copernicus, Galilei, Kepler could start relearning what had been forgotten. During this dark period, it would be the Arabs and Hindus that were leading the roles in mathematics. My name is Bradley Moore, and this was a presentation on the death of Hypatia for the History of Mathematics, Mayville State University. Thanks for watching.